Bowers who drops it. to see from Boston College a lot of different looks this offensive coordinator Frank Signetti very experienced from the NFL long lineage of great coaches with the last name Signetti you're gonna see boots you're gonna see nakeds you're gonna see play action you're gonna see outside zone run scheme then you're also gonna see some of the new age RPO so I like the package that they've put together here and what's been a difficult offseason for college football, they've done a nice job of creating some different looks offensively. Empty look on second and ten. Jerkovic took a lot of time. Ball comes out, and there is a mad scramble for the ball. And BC is able to jump on it. So it'll be third and long. It was Taman Fox coming in hard on Jerkovic. Now a third down in 12. After the pressure came in. At Garwo, redshirt freshman speedster checks in to flank Jerkovic here. As Long comes in motion on third and 12. Pressure off the edge. Garwo picks it up. And then taken down for the sack that time. And it's Chaz Surratt. The preseason first team, All America, with a sack. What a great job by Chaz Surratt coming off the left hand side. Garwo trying to go low, but Surratt stays with it, gathers himself quickly after the initial contact, and wraps up the big Dracovic for the sack. Surratt's one of the best linebackers in the country, especially when it comes to applying pressure. Grant Carlson on the punt away to the dangerous Daz Newsom. Newsom calling for the fair catch, and he does so at the 16. And that means leaves starting to turn. And Sam Howell's been turning heads for a year plus now, the sophomore quarterback, as he quickly gets it to Carter, and Carter gets the edge and works a little harder to make his way to the 24. So here is Sam Howell after that sensational freshman season. Yeah, trying to build on. He said his offseason was not really spent trying to study himself, but more studying defense, becoming a smarter player at the line of scrimmage, and it's paid dividends already this year. Second and three. Helmet came off as Carter goes to the right side of the line. Somebody's got to go get their equipment. It's going to be third and a short one. You're going to love watching Sam Howell play. and So accurate, so decisive with an excellent supporting cast. Mac Brown has a special quarterback that is committed to getting better every single day. And as you're building a program, you're building the foundation of a program. When you got a guy like Sam Howell, you're in good shape for the future. He's one of the greatest to ever do it right there. 32-year career. Never coached against BC in those 32 years. Williams comes in on third and one. He's the battering ram between the tackles. They're going to pass it on third and one. And they do so to Toe Groves, who explodes up the near sideline. And great rest recognition there from Sam Howell on short yardage. Nobody ran with Groves on the wide route. He was just really motioning across the formation, almost like a decoy. But Howell recognized that there was not a Boston College player that ran with them. So he jumped leverage immediately. Easy pitch and catch. It turned into a real positive play on third down. 13 Excellent yards recognition. there from Toe Groves. Williams this time nowhere to go as he was taken down right away by Max Richardson. Max Roberts also involved there. Richardson, the heart and soul leader of this Eagles defense for head coach Jeff Hathley. Season number one after last year, he became sort of the buzz assistant coach in the game when he was leading the defense at Ohio State. Second and nine. Howell near side and gets it complete to the ultra-talented Deami Brown. And that is another first down for North Carolina. I'm telling you, you're going to look at this North Carolina roster, and you're going to think, all right, Sam Howell's the real deal. But I'm telling you, these wide receivers, this is the second best. Behind Clemson, the second best 
group of skill position players in the ACC, including Howell, his dynamic running backs, and his excellent receiving core. Williams finds a crease and drives ahead to move the chains. He took Richardson for a ride. McDuffie made the tackle. And now quick to the line as North Carolina goes tempo. And Howell's going to look to run, then come back and pass, and should have had it complete to Morales. But when they get in that tempo, they find a play that they like. They run the exact same play. That time, however, Howell deciding to pull it. But with the answers that are built into Phil Longo's system, you can still throw the RPO down the field. That one just a little off the mark, or else they would have another positive play. in his face and he's going to be ridden down and that was big Marcus Valdez with the sack of Sam Howell just an excellent inside pass rush from Valdez he's working against Montalis the left guard he swims inside beats the left guard inside and there is nothing you can do as a quarterback but excellent job there by the Boston College defense getting home with the Great move up front. Team captain Valdez with the sack to put North Carolina in a third and 18. Howell trying to extend the play. Launches downfield and has it complete for a first down to Bo Corrales. How about that third and 18 and they convert? And how about the throw? Never supposed to throw back across your body unless you complete it. You know, that's the rule <laughs> as a quarterback. Howell, good job buying time, escaping, and keeping his eyes downfield. And how about Corrales? I mean, he's looking right into the sun. Not easy to make that catch, but good job going up across the middle and making the tough play. To the ground with Carter, and he is met right away. That's a great fill against the run by Max Richardson to fit that thing up and take down Carter. It's not often you see... Michael Carter tackled in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He's so elusive. It's an excellent job there by Max Richardson, dragging him down in the open field. It's an excellent one-two punch at running back with Carter, who's speedy, and Williams, who's powerful. And now this guy, who's so talented with the arm. Howell on second and 10, and it's incomplete. As the coverage came from Elijah Jones, he was looking to connect with Bo Corrales. ESPN College Football Prime Time. It is the Deep South's oldest rivalry. What a game tonight. Georgia and Auburn, 7.30 Eastern. Third down and 10 as the BC defense. They had him in a third and 18. Couldn't get the stop against Howell and company. Now a third down and 10. Plenty of time, and he gets it complete, and into the end zone goes Brown. Chaffrey Brown, the younger brother of Diami, with the touchdown for the Heels. Just a great throw. And a perfect route design against man coverage. Joffrey Brown breaking to the inside, right, working right off the hip of the slot receiver, creating some separation and a great run after catch. Atkins adds the extra point. And Howell, a couple big third last few days. I logged some hours on out around Chestnut Hill. I feel like I, I know it better than, than anyone on our crew except for you, Joe. I mean, it's... <laughs> It's pretty amazing. What a what a beautiful place. My first trip up here, and it is really, really special. I'll tell you who was special was Sam Howell on that last drive when North Carolina was three for three on third downs. Had the 24-yard touchdown to Brown. Seven-nothing Tar Heels. Second possession for Phil Jerkovic. And the Eagles offense. The new kid in town, Jerkovic, transferred into BC from Notre Dame this past January. 
He's taken over that quarterback position with three years of eligibility still to use. Third start of his college football career. Very bright future. Very naturally gifted and it's off to a heck of a start displaying poise in each of his first two starts. Dracovic with time, cross field, and able to get it complete, and that is Jalen Gill. Let's check in with Paul. You know, Joe, so much excitement around Phil Dracovic. In the 2018 class, when he signed with Notre Dame, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, alongside Clemson's Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields from Ohio State. Notre Dame found their guy, and BC is excited. I'll just add one more thing. He's listed at 225. No way he's 225. This guy looks like a tight end from the <laughs> sideline. Completely agree. Runs like a two. So 12 yards to Jalen Gill, who was a big recruit himself and started his career at Ohio State. And now Jerkovic near side and going down for it was Zay Flowers, but they say it's incomplete. It's a pretty impressive class when you look at 2018. I mean, we all know what Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields have gone on to do, but Matt Corral's had some bright moments. Spencer Sanders injured right now, but hoping the best for him in his Oklahoma State career. And of course, Phil Turkovic starting his career at Notre Dame, but finding a home here at Boston College is going to be a big part of the reason why I think this Boston College team is going to be a force in the years to come. They run it with Garwell, an excellent pursuit right down the line that time. Ray Vohasek with the tackle. He is a wrecking ball on the inside. Tell you what, North Carolina's offense gets a lot of credit, understandably so, but they have some good pieces on defense and a young defense too, Joe. In their 27 players that see the field, 19 of those 27 are either freshmen or sophomores. So bright future here on the defensive side of the football along with Sam Howell and that talented offense. Third down and 10. Offensive line making their calls here for protection. Third and ten. Three-man rush. Jerkovic stands up to it. Downfield and in stride complete. That's C.J. Lewis. The redshirt junior from Hamden, Connecticut. Cheshire Academy has all the physical tools. All right, did I tell you Ben Roethlisberger or not? <laughs> because this is vintage Roethlisberger. Just sheds a tackle from a defensive lineman. No problem. Moves to his left. Gather them, gathers himself and delivers a strike 30 yards downfield with ease. It's an impressive play there from Jerkovic. And he's a guy that's kind of a momentum player. Once he makes a play like that, he builds on it. So let's see what he does the rest of the stride. Five completions, eight attempts so far. Took a hit there, but able to get it complete. And also taking a big hit was Travis Levy at the end of that play that went for a nine-yard reception. Beautiful throw back shoulder knowing that there's a defender over the top and he was staring down the barrel of a loaded gun because Chas Surratt was blitzing and he just got rid of it in time excellent stuff Big hit at the end. second and one and the big David Bailey comes in as the Eagles running back and he will get the work here and with all that size it doesn't take much for him to go downhill and pick up a first down Gimmel made the tackle there. I think Gimmel has to run off the field with his helmet in his hand. That's a guy that I had high hopes for for Boston College this year. It was David Bailey. Him now with A.J. Dillon departed, playing for the Green Bay Packers. Thought Bailey would have a chance to kind of develop into that role. It hasn't happened just yet. As his offensive line and this run game, frankly, still trying to find themselves in the early part of the season. Kovic off the boot and once again unable to connect with Flowers on a similar play they had on their first possession. See the sun cresting here in this beautiful fall afternoon. Seven play drive for BC. Fanless atmosphere because of the state and local government regulations in the midst of the COVID pandemic. 
Dracovic stays alive again into the hands of Levy, who wiggles his way inside the 20-yard line. It'll set up third down and about eight. Tell you what, as the game goes along, right now North Carolina and their defensive coordinator, Jay Bateman, they have a feel for the protections because they have had numerous unblocked rushers heading straight for Phil Dracovic. So they're going to have to make an adjustment offensively here in the next couple drives because they cannot continue to get overloaded. That leads to problems and right now not being able to move the football the way they could. Third down and six. Here comes some pressure. Dracovic lofts it and incomplete after the big hit on Hunter Long. That was Trey Morrison coming in on the All-American candidate, Hunter Long, and he is in pain on the turf. And that is BC's best offensive weapon right now that the trainers are running out to see. And you hope he's okay. He releases downfield, and ball is thrown into traffic. He goes up, tries to make a play for his quarterback, and as you can see, the defender there, Trey Morrison, delivering a big shot. Right to the midsection of the big Hunter Longs. Hope he's okay. So that was a big collision there over the middle of the field. We got a guy hurt and they're cheering. We got a guy hurt and they're cheering. Listen, you can hear everything in this atmosphere without a fan. And you could hear upset Jeff Halfley was there as Hunter Long is down. And he did not like the way it was being dealt with with some of the players. This is a unique atmosphere here, unlike anything that we've experienced in recent weeks. Obviously, in the midst of the pandemic, we have had limited fans, but here, no fans. We're going to take a short break as they try to help out Hunter Long. Your tight end for Boston College, up under his own power. He's now being evaluated. He took a massive shot over the middle of the field. A legal hit but a very, very big hit nonetheless. So that leaves him with an Aaron Bumeri 35-yard field goal attempt. And Bumeri, who was the hero last week when he had the game winner, puts this through. So after that 10-play drive where Hunter Long took a big hit on the third down. But Mary able to connect on the 35-yarder. Let's check in with Paul. You know, at BC, there's a famous father and current BC player connection that runs deep in Chestnut Hill. Let's start with longtime college and NFL coach and currently an assistant at Florida. Paul Pasqualoni's son, Tito, is a long snapper. Mike Vrabel, well, he won a Super Bowl with the Patriots, and now the Titans coach, his son Tyler, plays on the offensive line. There's Hall of Fame defensive back Michael Haynes, his son Tate plays the same position, and then last but not least, oh there's Joe Tessitore. <laughs> I think I know that guy. His son John is a kicker and punter, and John has his dad's great looks. Takes after his mom as BC tried to go for the punch kick and the flag comes down as it drifts out of bounds. He's just number 98 today, everybody on the crew, and we appreciate the love. I love it. It's so great to see John, and I know you are so proud that he is here at BC doing a great job holding. Had maybe the hold up, best hold I've ever seen last week, frankly, uh, on the game winner, Joe. This I mean, is the most it was attention amazing. that a backup punter and starting holder has <laughs> ever received in network history. It is awesome. You so guys are very kind. It's a very good special team room. They love each other, and last week they sure delivered for Matt Turin, the coordinator who came over here from Ohio State. Well, that dynamic duo for North Carolina is in the backfield. Carter and Williams out there together.
There are two fouls on the play. Offside on the kicking team, number four. That penalty's declined. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Five yards will be added to where the ball went out of bounds, and it'll be their ball, first and ten. Carter and Sam Howell, so much talent and skill positions for North Carolina. Howell already 69 yards in that touchdown and connected to Joffrey Brown. From where the dead ball belongs, North Carolina. For those of us, the odds will be the same. For those of you watching us right now, Carolina's ball, first down. We want to let you know that we will be changing networks and headed over to ABC for the remainder of the afternoon. Seven three North Carolina has a quick strike to Diami Brown and Diami Brown with a chunk play for the Tar Heels. Glad you're with us today from here on a beautiful fall day in Chestnut Hill. Joe Tessitore and Greg McElroy high atop an empty alumni stadium with the state and local government regulations not allowing for any fans here on this crisp autumn day. Sam Howell, one of the best young quarterbacks in college football, to the end zone and off the hands of Brown. Howell was excellent earlier today, converted a couple big third downs, and then hit Chopri Brown, the younger brother of Diami, for a 24-yard touchdown. And then Phil Dracovic and that Boston College offense just came down the field with a 10-play drive that finished with Aaron Boomeri in a 35-yard field goal. Number 12 team in the country is North Carolina because of COVID and because of a bye week. This is their first game they've played in 21 days, and they have been shaking off that rust fairly well. Not much as good pursuit down the line by Isaiah McDuffie. McDuffie, who had a big game a week ago with 12 tackles, three TFLs, and two sacks, comes up with the tackle here against Michael Carter. And the story there on the first drive for North Carolina was the efficiency by Sam Howell on third down. Here he is again in the third and long situation. Already he's converted on third and 10, has converted on third and 18. Now third and eight, can he do it again with this talented wide receiver for He's showing pressure with Richardson in that A gap before he backs off. Third down and eight. Three for three on third down so far. All the heels and Howell's going to tuck, run, get it, and more. It's going to be first and goal, North Carolina. Mike Palmer finally tracked him down. Excellent recognition from Sam Howell. Man coverage with pressure. And as soon as that pass rush loses phase and he sees an opening, the quarterback run, who's guarding the quarterback? There's nobody. So he takes off, and you see Sam Howell really worked on his body to become a better runner this year, converts on a nice third and long. Taking that nutrition seriously, it's paying off. And now here's Carter, and Carter trying to reach out for the goal line. Ball came out at the end, but he should be marked down at about the one-yard line. As Jones tried to make a play for that loose ball, but Carter reaching out, and it was the ground that caused it. Take a look at it here as Carter's going to the ground. You see him extend, and clearly that hip on the ground, that arm is really, the arm's contact with the ground is really what dislodges the football. Dangerous play there from Carter, but clearly down. And a good job by the official with the spot. The big battering ram, Javante Williams, comes into the backfield. Second and goal. And he will muscle his way in. That is what he is best at. We got Carter, who's the run past you guy, and Williams, who's the run over you guy. And this offense can really move, and they are talented everywhere you look. Three 
three touchdowns in the second half last week against Syracuse and adds to it here today. 14-3 for the number 12 team in the country on a beautiful fall day from Chestnut Hill. It's under new head coach Jeff Halfley and offensive coordinator Frank Signetti. Howell with a touchdown pass. Williams with a touchdown run. Framed against the Bumeri field goal. A beautiful day here in Chestnut Hill. Overlooking the resi. And you see Gaston Hall up on high. Third down and two. David Bailey. And David Bailey just runs over two North Carolina players. And will move the chains past midfield. When he gets going downhill, watch out. Here it comes. There we go. David Bailey. Welcome to the party in 2020, man, because that's the David Bailey I expected to see this year. He's kind of an A.J. Dillon clone, kind of a Jerome Bettis. Downhill, big body back, and we haven't seen it up to this point. That might have been his best run of the year so far. Ball was bobbled, and Dracovic somehow gets it over to Zay Flowers. But Flowers, with most of the North Carolina defense pursuing, just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Shadows about 75% across the field now as we come up towards 4.30 in this afternoon just outside of Boston. Second and 11, Jerkovic lofts it downfield and wide open downfield is Hunter Long. The All-America candidate at tight end who came into this week leading all tight ends in total catches in the country. Well, this is a beautiful design here. Heavy play action, and you see Long on the left side of your screen sneak through and then on kind of like a reverse wheel route as you cross the middle of the field and then you get up field and you see Jerkovic, the big body quarterback hit yet again as he delivers the ball but able to get it up on it to get it out there to his tight end 31 yards to long and now a first down and Jerkovic to the end zone diving effort was incomplete he was looking for travis levy now levy's interesting a running back though a lot of experience out in the slot and split out yeah, that was a, would have been a really good catch there. And, and Levy is a versatile weapon. I mean, I think he does a really good job as a receiver, as a route runner, very consistent hands. And it's a nice change of pace from David Bailey. He's the big body downhill back. Second and ten, Bailey. And Bailey will make his way down to just inside the 10-yard line. He's third and a long four from there. Fox had the tackle on David Bailey. Well, it's really early in this game, Tess, but if I'm Boston College and I gain four yards here, I'm going for it. Even if I gain three, I'm going for it. Because field goals are not going to beat North Carolina. Their offense is just too good. So when you have it in prime field position like you do right here, you might have two downs to get it knowing what it's likely going to take to knock off the number 12 team in the country. First year head coach Jeff Halfley. Third and five, Jerkovic. And that is knocked out of the hands of Long. It was Trey Morrison coming in. Very uncharacteristic drop there. By Long, as you see, he sits up right in the zone. I mean, well-thrown football on time, and that's one that Long will catch 99 times out of 100. Unfortunately there, though, doesn't help his offense at all, and they're going to have to settle for three. So Bomeri trots on there for the 27-yard field goal attempt. And he has his second of the day. BC cuts it to an eight-point margin, but will field goals get it done today? Idle teams as the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Ohio State Buckeyes find their way back into the top ten after being unranked for a couple weeks, of course, tongue-in-cheek. But we're really going to be treated to an excellent game tonight on ESPN 7:30 as the Georgia Bulldogs welcome the number seven ranked Auburn Tigers to town. Looking forward to that game. And a long mince kickoff fielded by 
Michael Carter is going to be waved for it for the fair catch. Let's check in with Kevin. Test time now for our protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate. We'll take a look at a great touchdown play in Tuscaloosa. Number two, Alabama providing the protection for Mac Jones and John Mechie. 78 yards. Jones, five for five so far. Bama up 14-7 over Texas A&M. Test back to you. Thank you, Kevin. Texas A&M did not look like they were in sync last week, and now you get a trip to Tuscaloosa. Yeah, I think that may be a case of the look-ahead flu. What do you think, Kevin? Mm -hmm. I mean, with all due respect to Vanderbilt, when you see Bama on the schedule week two, it's understandable that maybe they didn't have their full attention on the Commodores last week. So it'll be interesting. This Bama team, they looked outstanding there last week against Missouri. So Sam Howell with his feet planted in the end zone. We'll get to Williams, and Williams is stacked up. Gets a few more yards, but he had big Isaiah McDuffie wrapping around him with T.J. Ram. Speaking of Alabama, T.J. Ram, one of the rare players who grew up in the heart of the SEC but came north to play here at B.C. He's the son of a former Crimson Tide defensive lineman, Thomas Ram. Remember Georgia and Auburn tonight, number four and number seven, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Can't wait to see that one. Second and seven. Howell from his own end zone. He's going to crank it up. He was hit. Ball comes out, and it is picked off. That is Brandon Sebastian with the big interception for the Eagles. Brandon Sebastian with the big play for BC. And just an excellent rush off the right side. They beat the running back there in protection as Williams was trying to pick it up. And Muse gets the hit on Howell, deflecting the ball way up in the air. And how about the job, too, defensively by Sebastian, high-pointing that football and reeling it in. Excellent job by BC's defense, taking advantage of the rush there against the running back for North Carolina. So Sebastian with the pickoff, and now BC with a chance to cash as this thing is served up for them. First and goal, Jerkovic to the end zone. Incomplete. He was trying to connect with Zay Flowers. You know, Brandon Sebastian, who had that interception, he's a fine young man. He's got a bracelet honoring his late brother Jordan, who's a beloved former player, young coach at the Hopkins School back home in Connecticut, who lost a battle with colon cancer at only 24 years old. And he looks at that bracelet throughout the game and says, Jordan's strong and dominate the day. Yeah, it's a sad story there, but a beautiful tribute there from Sebastian wearing that thinking about it all the time and constantly touching it for luck throughout the course of the game second and goal Dracovic with time incomplete looking for CJ Lewis so he'll be sitting on a third and goal and there he is after the interception what's the first thing he does he touches that bracelet Honor his brother Jordan. This is a huge third down for Boston College. I mean, huge. And he got a look in the direction of your tight end, who's lined up, attached to the line of scrimmage. Big body down here. He's got to be your go-to guy. Third and goal. Touchdown, Eagles. David Bailey leaking out of the backfield. Smartly done by Jerkovic and offensive coordinator Frank Signetti. And just like that, the interception is cashed in. It's just a great call. You see internal pressure looking like it, but instead, internally, Jeremiah Gemmel, number 44 for North Carolina, he's actually in man coverage. It's an excellent job by Jerkovic recognizing that that was a bluff in the middle. And them coming off the edge, him hitting the hot route to Bailey for the touchdown. Just beautiful design as a blitz answer there in the red zone for the Eagles. Now, as they are wont to do, Tessator was in the shotgun there for a moment, thinking about a two-point conversion before they bring them back in. So instead of going for the tie, they're going to tack on one. And a big play from the defense. John and Muse got in on how Sebastian had the pickle 14-13 number 12 
North Carolina with that tremendous offense. But moments ago, a turnover turned into a quick six for BC. Let's go to the studio and Kevin. Tess, we got an update from the SEC after being down 14 nothing. Here come the Aggies. First play after the defense gets a pick. Helen Mond to Ryan Rennick, 17 yards. We're tied at 14 apiece in Tuscaloosa. And to the ACC, this is not good. Jacksonville State up 14 nothing in Tallahassee against Florida State. The return of Mike Norvell on the sidelines. Knowles in a hole. Back to you, Tess. Boy, oh boy. What is going on there in Tallahassee? Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Paul Carcaterra here in Chestnut Hill. So Sam Howell back out there after the pressure led to the interception. As he gives to the talented Speedy Carter, and Carter was met right at the line of scrimmage, but somehow goes ahead for a couple of yards. Isaiah McDuffie with the tackle. Paul. Defense is bringing it for Boston College after that last turnover. And D.C. Tem Lokobu is ecstatic right now. He was born in Africa. Great story. Born in the Congo. As a young boy, he moved to the U.S. because his father's job, Kabuji's job, was a diplomat and ambassador to the United Nations. Moved to Jersey. Fell in love with football as a sixth grader. And I'll tell you what, he played college football at Colgate. We spent time with this guy yesterday. He was fantastic. Really was. Second down and eight. Incomplete. It's going to be a third down. Lukabu is a dynamic, fast-rising coach. He has all the makings of a future head coach. He's got the NFL experience. He's got great college experience. Now let's see what his defense can come up with on third and eight against this talented Carolina team. Well, Lukabu's an impressive guy, man. I mean, he is going to be a head coach very, very soon. Third down and eight. Sam Howell, 38 touchdown passes a year ago as a freshman. BC showed a little pressure with Max Richardson off the edge. Excellent receiving tandem for North Carolina. Here's Richardson coming in on Howell. Howell's going to tuck, run, try to get to the outside. And with that big body, he's able to go and lean forward against Josh DeBerry. And with that, he's going to move the chains. 6'1", 225, and as he said, much more confident with his legs now this year. Yeah, you said big body, not as big. He actually lost eight pounds from last year. Talking to him, he said, man, when I got to college, I was a freshman, I thought I needed the extra weight because I thought it'd protect me a little bit better. I'd be able to endure the season. But no, he realized that speed was actually more important. He leaned up his body. He really focused on his diet and flexibility and now expects to contribute an awful lot more with his legs here in 2020. Here's Williams, Javante Williams, as he gets past Richardson to the outside. So far, BC has done a pretty decent job on first and second down. They've had plenty of opportunities to create negative plays. They have the turnover. The third down has been really getting them so far. Quickly getting to the line. House is going to have to slide down there as he had big Brandon Barlow coming at him. By the way, number 44, Brandon Barlow from upstate New York. He graduated from Shaker High, a school not known for producing Division I talents, but longtime North Carolina sports fans know Shaker High is where Tar Heels basketball legend Sam Perkins came out of. Third down and seven. Howell going to take a shot, and it's incomplete. Good coverage that time from Elijah Jones on Deami Brown. Like we've talked at the beginning of that drive about Tim Lukabu, the defensive coordinator for Boston College. I like the way he played it right there. He said, hey, man, we're going to play man coverage, and if you're going to beat us on this third down, you're going to have to complete a low percentage throw down the field. We're going to get up in your face. We're going to press you. And as a result, Sam Howell just a little bit off the mark on the go ball down the left-hand side. That was a good job by the defensive coordinator making the throw to convert the third down very, very challenging. The punter from Dublin, Ireland, Ben Kiernan on to punt away as the whistles blow. Flag is down. False start. Kicking team number seven. It's a five-yard penalty. Fourth down. So Ben Kiernan, the sophomore punter from North Carolina, as I said originally from Ireland, was a rugby player. And his parents adopted a young girl who suffers a medical condition 
So with that, they wanted to move to the Rally North Carolina area. And there in high school, he took up American football. The rest is history. Here he is, big time in the ACC. Zay Flowers is the return man for the Eagles. As that drips out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. Paul? We have some international flavor in Chestnut Hill. Tem Lukabu, the D.C. for Boston College. His father's message when he was a young boy. Kovic trying to set up the screen. He does so to Garwell, but great pursuit by Jay Bateman's North Carolina defense. They are salty up front, aren't they? And this is an empty stadium with the exception of 10 NFL scouts allowed to be here today. Listen, we've been at stadium, we've been in arenas and stadiums where you've had partial crowds, right? We had nearly 20,000 down at Florida State. Ole Miss, we had about 16,000. This is far different here. It is really different. Uh, but what's funny is Ralph Macchio in the, uh, in the building. <laughs> He's a BC parent. Uh, is he? Wow. He is. Okay, also a Jets fan. So big. Hey, Ralph. Good to see you, bud. But it, it really is. It's it's different, but it's, it's the new normal, and kids are still playing hard. Second and 15, Flowers on the screen, and Flowers somehow slithers his way ahead to the 27-yard line. Chaz Surratt with the tackle. Last year's runner-up for ACC Defensive Player of the Year. I really like Chaz Surratt. Everyone seems to know the story. Don't often see the, the quarterback to linebacker move, but that's exactly what he did. And as a result of his experience playing quarterback, he has a great understanding of how offenses try to attack you, which has led to his excellence at the linebacker spot these last couple years for the Heels. He had a great visit with him yesterday. His football IQ is off the charts. Third down and nine as the whistles blow as Jerkovic was taking his drop. And there's going to be some movement on the BC front. False start. Offense, number four. It's a five-yard penalty, third down. So BC will be in a third and 14 hole. can hear everything here, can't you? <laughs> no fans. You hear the play call. So third and 14 for Dracovic. A big, talented transfer from Notre Dame. He's going to check down underneath, and Spencer Witter is going to be cut down. Redshirt freshman from West Hartford, Connecticut. As it was Conley with the tackle, seven yards for Witter. Nice job there from UNC's defense. They had obviously just given up the touchdown on the short field just a few moments ago, but this time forcing a negative play there early and doing a good job of tackling in the open field on second and third down. Excellent job there by the Tar Heels. Grant Carlson punting away. Daz Newsom, an excellent return man, is going to let this take a BC bounce, and it does all the way inside the 20. Well, we're discussing why we have no fans. We'll put it in perspective with a little Fenway Park comparison when we come back to the Heights here at Chestnut Hill. Time over 100 years there, they've had 14 no-hitters. But the no-hitter that everybody needs in college football is what BC's been able to do. 14 straight weeks with over 4,000 COVID tests and not a single positive. And that's why we get to play some football here today. It's amazing, absolutely amazing to go that long in such a difficult climate without a single positive. It's a testament to the kids and the players that have bought in. It's Michael Carter, and look at Carter, able to keep his balance before McDuffie drives him back. And you know, in spending time with Mac Brown, the North Carolina coach this week, so BC's had the no-hitter with COVID testing, but North Carolina's done everything the right way, and yet they're the ones, because of COVID, a bye week so greatly affected, 21 days between games. Yeah, and you have to wonder, how does that disrupt your rhythm? Obviously, offensively, they've come out, haven't missed a beat. Well, they've got this guy, Powell, and when he's got time, he puts it right in there. A flag is down as he connects with Deami Brown. <laughs> Field, offense number 63, 
It's a five-yard penalty, second down. You know, Joe, your son John's a redshirt sophomore on the team, and you've lived through this no-hitter. Yep. I'd like to hear from a father's perspective what it was like to have a son on the team who's gone through this and been so successful. Well, it's, it's not just our family story. It's every parent in college football watching all these young men sacrifice really since being sent home in March of working out at home, of finding anything to lift, to squat, of then coming up here and not being able to see family and friends or go home for the weekend just to stay in these bubbles. So give credit to the Carolina players, the BC players, all of them who have had a sacrifice so much just to play the sport they love. Second and six and nothing happening there for Carter. And the one thing I'll say is simply this. During all the talk of should they play, shouldn't they play, if you talk to the kids, they wanted to play. And they wanted to do it safely, and they wanted to do it the right way, and these two teams have done that. Yeah, it required tremendous accountability within the locker room and within the coaching staff. I mean, it's it's really been amazing, and the reward has been playing and, and representing your school and your state and trying to bring a lot of positivity to the world. So it's been a lot of fun to be a part of these last few weeks. Third down and six, Howell. A little bit of pressure, but look at his escape ability. And then leaps ahead for a first down. Let's go to the studio and Kevin. As we saw Texas A&M tied up, Alabama responding. Najee Harris, second touchdown of the game. Five touchdowns in six quarters so far this season. 21-14, Bama in the second. Back to you guys. Okay, so Harris with a couple of touchdowns. Jones had a big touchdown pass for Bama as well. One of the hardest working players you'll ever be around, Sam Howell. Wants to watch film, loves to grind and get better every day. And Williams wrestled down by Richardson as well as Valdez. A reminder that tomorrow it's Sunday NFL Countdown. After coaching Manning and Big Ben, Andrew Luck, Bruce Arians reveals his secrets that he's passed on to Tom Brady. Plus, Randy Moss on the best catches from today. Kick things off with NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Second and six. That's incomplete. He was looking for Brown who had the touchdown, but a flag's going to come in here as Brandon Sebastian, who had the interception earlier, was on coverage. Pass interference. Defense number 10. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. Of course, the big news buzzing up this way. There's a report of Cam Newton testing positive and the NFL moving the Pats Chiefs game. We've been off to an excellent start. Everyone's wondering, what's the marriage going to be like between Bill Belichick and Cam Newton? And so far, so good, of course, delivering some really exciting moments, especially in the loss against Seattle just a couple weeks ago. Al swings it to Williams. And Williams able to get the corner past midfield before he's finally tracked down by McDuffie. So you got Carter, who likes to get past you, and we talk about Williams being between the tackles, but get him into space, and he can get that motor revving, too. No, there's no doubt. But how about we give a little love to big number 84, Garrett Walston. Not usually that much of a factor in the passing game. Blocking right there, taking out two Boston College defenders as he secures the edge for his running back. That's an excellent job from the senior tight end. Williams finds a nice hole and then is able to get past to Barry and take him for a ride. And a flag is down. Check on that. Three and a half minutes to go here in this first half. Personal foul. Illegal chop block. Offense number 72 and number 63. It's a 15-yard penalty. First down. Awesome. Richards is big number 72. The left tackle from Haverford School outside of Philadelphia. Then Ed Montalus, who is starting in place of Josh Izudu, on the left guard. It's a big penalty. They're 15 yards. Your offense is starting to move. You just had a big play, and now you back yourself up a first down and a half. It just can't happen there on the left side of the offensive line. Of 
Sam Howell here, you just think, hey, can half of it back here on first down and try to get back on schedule on third. They got game breakers all over the place in this Carolina offense. Here's one of them, Carter. And Carter, look at him go. And just like that, Carter turns on the speed down the sideline and makes it to the 35-yard line. This is an awesome job by pick number 84 yet again. Alston delivered the blow earlier. And how about two on the outside, the wide receiver? Looked like it was Corrales that did a really good job of securing the edge for a couple extra yards there by Carter. 23 yards on first and 25. And now this, taking a shot, but overthrowing Deami Brown. Deami Brown, who had nine downfield touchdown catches last year. That was the second most in all of major college football. He's the deep threat. I love that idea, too, by Phil Long, though. Hey, it's second and short. Likely going to be able to pick it up on third down with how our offense operates. Let's take a shot downfield. And Deami Brown was on top of the defender. I thought Howell was just a little bit late on that throw. If he gets it up and down, that's a touchdown. Third and two. He's going to shift to a tight formation under center. And Williams, with all that blocking in front, will have the first down for the Tar Heels. Now today's Aflac trivia question. Greg, we're going to put you to the test today. Really going to put you to the test today. And BC's played at Fenway Park and Yankee Stadium in one year. That was 2017. Which other college football team has also played in both famous baseball stadiums in the same year? <laughs> I'm going to just go on a limb and say Notre Dame. But I, have, I literally have well, no idea. a quick idea. guess out of you. I have no idea. <laughs> Ball start, offense, number 74. It's a five-yard penalty, first down. Jordan Tucker, right tackle. There's a guy who may know there. Paul? Yeah, I remember doing the pinstripe ball with Notre Dame when they played against Rutgers. Mm -hmm. And I think that same year, they may have played Boston College in Fenway Park. So I'm leaning towards what Greg thinks, Notre yeah, Dame. Well, they have played Boston College at Fenway Park, but we'll see if that's the answer. So you have insider information since you called the game. That, now I feel better about it. I had forgotten about I it. I only called one ball. of the games. <laughs> the 50%, pretty good. After the penalty, it's a first and 15. Howell off the play action. Pressure coming, and he's taken down. As getting to him was Barlow. Barlow, who was dealing with a turf toe in camp, but has been a four-year steady contributor, comes up with a huge play for Luka Boo's defense. Yeah, and he just goes right around Richards on the left-hand side. A good job, too, there by big number 99, T.J. Ram forcing the movement. That was a covered sack, though. Sam Howell's got to get that ball out. Can't stand back there that long. Expect the O-line to hold up. Second and 20. Howell, look at the time he has here. But he can't find anything downfield. And then in stride, he does, and it's Williams. What a play. Howell, Williams, touchdown as Howell was right up against the line of scrimmage and threw it. Just when that BC defense had found something, the ultra-talented Sam Howell does that. Now you look at it, the 41-yard line was the line of scrimmage. Remember, your entire body has to be across. So he looks clean right there. What a job by Sam Howell playing point guard. I mean, you see the guy cutting to the, cut into the hoop, and there he does, puts it right in stride. Excellent awareness of where he was on the field. And a very accurate throw to the running back who did a wonderful job after catch in finding the end zone. Well, they're going to take a peek at this. But as it stands, it's an impressive ad lib 41-yard time. The ruling on the field is Sam Howell did not cross the line entirely. A 41-yard touchdown to Javante Williams. This will be, should be confirmed. You can see 41-yard line is... The line of scrimmage. Yes, the left foot goes over, but that's not a problem. The entire body of the thrower has to cross the line of scrimmage for it to be an illegal forward pass. And clearly, you can see his right foot, really the whole right side of his body, is well behind the line of scrimmage. 
He is so impressive, isn't he, Hal? It's a great play yeah. guy in the game. You know, and you consider, listen, he's in the conference that has Trevor Lawrence. After further review, the quarterback's body was not completely beyond the original line of scrimmage. Therefore, the ruling on the field stands, and it will be a touchdown. You know, he's sitting there in a conference with Trevor Lawrence, and still, you know, people, he gets accolades and honors and the buzz, and you, you can see where it's all headed with Sam Howe, who's so impressive as a freshman with the 38 touchdown passes and what he was able to do late in games with 12 fourth quarter touchdown passes and here he dazzles again after they were in a hole and the defense was coming after them extending the play and finding Williams for a 41 yard score number 12 North Carolina Joe Greg and Paul back with you here in Chestnut Hill 21 13 North Carolina the Aflac trivia question we put forth. Aflac. A unique one. In fact, that BC has played both at Fenway and Yankee Stadium in a single season. We said, what other college football team has done that? Played in the two famous baseball parks in the same year? You guys said Notre Dame. How about NYU back in 1948? <laughs> You're like, hold on, NYU doesn't play football. Yeah, in 48 they did. They played the Yankee Stadium in Fenway Park. I mean, you want to talk about just the complete opposite. The Notre Dame story program, NYU no longer in existence as a program. That's That one was from, quite literally, no pun intended, considering the baseball reference. That one was from right field. Here we go. Three timeouts remaining and 69 seconds for Dracovic. As coming back for the ball that time and getting it complete with Zay Flowers. Last week, Dracovic did a great job in the two-minute operation. It's almost as if he's just playing at that point. No more thinking, just drop back, be an athlete, and throw the ball accurately. He's very comfortable in this type of situation. They try to steal some points. 15 yards on that last toss. Go back, looking for the comeback again as he goes to Hunter Long. Remember, Kevin, Mark, and Booger will get you squared away with everything you need to know on the State Farm Halftime Report. Tell you what's going on between a and in Alabama. Had a good one in the Big 12 earlier. And everything going on around the country. It was incomplete when he was looking for long, so it's second and 10. For Kovic, over the middle, and that is incomplete and low, and a flag is down as he was trying to connect with Jalen Gill. Flag is all the way back at the 32. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 56. It's a 15 yard penalty automatic. First down. That's on Tamari Fox, the outstanding defensive end. Just a bad penalty. It is. That's going to march BC cross midfield. 41 seconds, three timeouts to work with. Eagles trying to come up with something here and respond, setting up the screen now. Garwood, can he get around the edge? It's good pursuit that time by the big 300-pounder, Bohasek. 35 seconds remain, still the three timeouts. There's still plenty of time, and you, of course, know that with those three timeouts, you can work the middle of the field, no problem whatsoever. You know at the bare minimum, you can spend two of those timeouts. The last one's for your special teams unit. So any sack, any negative play, you fire one of those timeouts quickly, but you got to still be really smart getting the ball out of your hands if you're Dracovic. Dracovic quickly to long. This is what they did last week, two times to come from behind and win here at home. And that can be a confidence builder, the experience of having done it. 30 seconds were made. It'll be third down and three. Three, Jerkovic, and they'll have the first down and more as Hunter Long scoots ahead. Haven't even had to use one of the timeouts yet. 25 seconds on the clock here at Alumni Stadium. Well, now you can huddle it up. Let's talk about the situation. For Jerkovic, this is a time when I'm thinking, hey, I want to try to push one down the field. I have plenty of time. Of course, my field goal kicker is very comfortable from this distance. So. This is where you try to start thinking, hey, maybe we can steal six as opposed to three. So take a couple shots, especially if you find one-on-one -on -one with one of your wide receivers. They bring pressure this time. 
Dracovic retreats and then throws it away and gets it complete to Garwald. Seventeen seconds. Four yards there. I'm surprised they're not trying to work the middle of the field. I mean, with those timeouts, everything's been to the boundary. Undoubtedly. So I, I feel like that's it, the luxury with the timeouts. Yeah, you, it opens up the entire field to try to work the middle of the field. That's where you might find a big play, and I haven't really opted to do that so far. Chaz Surratt, incredible performance a year ago, and is off to a good start this year. Stalking linebacker for North Carolina. Second and six. Jerkovic. They're going to go screen now with Garwo. Cuts it back inside the 20. Tripped up just beyond the 15-yard line. They can use one of those timeouts, leaving them nine seconds left. So Coach Halfley will talk things over. Jeff Halfley who grew up in New Jersey and then was a wide receiver at a small school before starting his coaching career. I like the call there. There have been some pressure looks from North Carolina. They're more simulated pressure. They're not overload pressure. What beats pressure? Screens. So I like the idea there. Hey, let's get a running back in open space with a couple blockers, and, and maybe he makes a guy miss for a big play. You know, he made the comment not long ago about letting Dracovic just go out there and play. New quarterback comes to a new team, new staff. Those first few weeks, communication, you can play tight. But I think he's at his best when he just does this. Yeah, I mean, just just go. And it's so funny. You watch young guys, too, that are, just have remarkable gifts. First and second down, they struggle. But for whatever reason, on third down, they become excellent. Same situational awareness with two minutes. And that's clearly where Dracovic is at his best and is showing it again this week. Only nine ticks of the clock to work with to the end zone. And that was beyond Hunter Long. It leaves them five seconds. Oh, man, this is one that Jerkovic's going to probably lose a little sleep over throughout the next seven days. I mean, he had long open, working against a linebacker with a split safety look. Threw it really early, and it was way over the head of long. But my goodness, you're in the right place. He's open. It's a great play call, well-executed drive. Just a missed opportunity there from Boston College. So Boomeri comes on for the field goal attempt, 30-yard attempt. Two for two on the day. Off the upright and banks in. Well, he's good, but it's good to be lucky. Boomeri, bank shot. And that'll finish off an entertaining first half as BC cuts it to five. Hold, kick, and reaction. You'll take it any way you can get it, young man. 21 to 16, number 12, North Carolina on top. State Farm halftime report after this message and a word. Moves in the pocket and buys a little extra time. The coverage has to be better because that's where they've really turned good plays into great plays and a big reason why they entered halftime with the lead. Danny Longman kicking off to start the second half. Fair catch by Carter. Paul. Well, I just caught up with Jeff Halfley. For starters, I love this coach's energy, man. He is a young, vibrant star in the making. Really positive about his team. He felt offensively they left too much on the table in the red zone. A couple errant passes by Phil Dracovic. Some drop balls as well. Defensively, the biggest issue is hunting down Sam Howell. He's been extending plays on third down. They got to get him off the field on third down. Max Richardson will have to be a spy and hunt him down. Well, remember, we discussed the fact that Sam Howell lost about 10 pounds and gained a little good weight, as he described it, but he's more agile, he's more mobile, he's been extending plays, had that spectacular extending of the play to get the 41-yard touchdown. Carter comes out of the backfield. Howell goes to the top of your screen, and he does so with Corrales, who tips toes the sideline. Bo Corrales, who's been dealing with a nagging injury lately, but he's the senior who's very reliable. They got the dynamic duo with Newsom and Brown and then Corrales who contributes as they go tempo to start things off in the second half. And it will be Michael Carter. And Carter is brought down and met that time. Pacific Life game summary.
Powell came out early, connected with Brown for the touchdown. That one turnover was critical. Hughes came in, rushed Howell. Sebastian had the interception, and that led to the Bailey touchdown to make this a closer game. That and the red zone possessions that were field goal for Boston College. Well blocked, and look at Carter that time, taking Max Richardson for a ride. 5'8", 199 pounds, but that leg strength for 11 yards here from Michael Carter. Yeah, well done up front, too, by the right side of that offensive line, just condensing that defensive line. And I'll tell you what, man, these running backs, Carter and Williams, they are a really solid one-two punch to complement each other nicely. And this is coming off of a 21-day layoff, and here he goes again, just shredding the middle of that BC defense before Max Richardson finally got to him. You would expect them to continue trying to run that same exact play. It's the same play. But look at the right side of that offensive line, and more specifically, big old Jordan Tucker at right tackle, who's listed at 335, and I think that's generously light, as he does a really good job of securing the edge. 21-yard run from Carter. And Williams will get some work here. And Williams patiently waiting for a block and then spinning his way to the 22-yard line. You look at North Carolina. Look, Howell and these receivers get so much credit. But the way they run the football, the way they create balance, and they really put you in a conflict defensively because you have to respect their run game. They have big bodies on the offensive line that seem to get better as the game goes along. So we'll see whether or not Boston College can weather the storm here as it looks like North Carolina's about to enter the red zone. Empty look on second and three. Howell. He's going to tuck and run, and then he's going to be driven back. That was Elijah Jones who was tracking him. Really physical player from Cardinal Hayes High School down in New York. This is the down, third down. It was such a struggle for Boston College in the early going. What does Sam Howell do? And will he be able to, again, extend the play by escaping the pocket? It looks like Boston College is going to bring some pressure. Opening drive of the second half, and it's been taken with purpose by North Carolina. They've been delivering on third down all day long, seven of eight. Third and three here. Howell looking to convert again. Pressure off the edge, and they get to him, and he stands up to it for the moment before. Now the ball's out. The ball is all the way out back at midfield. What a play by the BC defense. Every which way there was an eagle on him. So what was such a promising opening drive for North Carolina just hit reverse in a major way. I mean, it's all out pressure. You have to know if you're Howell, you do not have all day. There's going to be an unblocked player. That unblocked player was Palmer. Howell tries to make something out of nothing, but I love the hustle here from Javante Williams, number 25, the running back, who recovered the fumble. It looked as though Boston College had four defenders that were chasing that ball, and out comes 25 out of nowhere to save a lot of field position. That's great hustle there from the running back. Now punting is Kiernan. Dylan Gill, fair catch at the 15. Mike Palmer, a big play. Deion Jones, the starting safety is out, but Palmer just stepped up as the flag is down at the 37-yard line. And I'll tell you, the way North Carolina was running the ball on that opening drive, looked like they were just coming Bearing right kick, through BC. Holding, receiving team number 10. Be a 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Timeout. So BC will take over. Day layoff. A lot of finger pointing of some movement up front for BC. False start. Offense number 81. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So Max said it was like a mini off season in season, 21 days off because of a COVID cancellation, then a bye week. And he went back into the history book. He said the last time North Carolina had the three-week layoff during a season, 68 years ago, 1952, a polio outbreak. All-time great head coach and historian. No doubt. Matt Brown, right? <laughs> it's almost like a bowl prep. I mean, it's, it's been right. that long. It's almost as if it's like bowl season for, for North Carolina. And if history's any indicator, they played pretty well in a bowl game last year. Worst starting field position today for BC, and it just got worse. David Bailey tackled for a loss there. Kamen Rucker, who's an outstanding freshman with the tackle. You know, Tim Cross, the defensive line coach, said of Kamen Rucker, he said, 
He's a rolling ball of butcher knives. A rolling ball of butcher <laughs> knives. Is that a great description for a defensive end? That might be the best description I've ever heard. That is fantastic and appropriate because Rucker, along with so many other freshmen that are playing pivotal roles early in their career on defense for North Carolina, they're going to be a really good group here pretty soon. Jerkovic from his own end zone. And incomplete, and a flag is down. He was looking for Hunter Long, as he often does, the 11th time he's targeted him. Flag is back in the end zone. BC's got to be worried about this possibly being a holding. It was weird because Flowers was coming across the formation, trying to run into the flat, and North Carolina almost tackled him. It was, it was kind of strange there as they were trying to work the naked. Could have pass interference here on North Carolina. See which way it goes. Holding defense number 12. It's a 10 yard penalty. Remains third and down. Because the holding took place behind the line of scrimmage, it does not include an automatic first down. And you see Flowers number four working across. And then you can see just on the right side of your screen, just barely there on the right side of your screen. Flowers, the official's kind of in the way, but it was a tough play there, tough look, but all things considered, a, a big bailout there for BC, who is way deep in their own end to make it a more manageable second down situation. Second and five. Dracovic quickly gets it out and into the hands of Hunter Long. Long out to the 21-yard line. So, you know, they were in that hole there. All of a sudden, there's Dracovic deep in his end zone. And now a first down out to the 21-yard line. Pat Garwo, the running back now. Travis Levy is out with a shoulder. So it's Bailey and Garwo getting the work for the Eagles. And he'll take the pitch. Had a wait for his blockers to get out in front. Big Zion Johnson was trying to find some work to do. Zion Johnson, by the way, very serious academic, was just named a semifinalist for the prestigious Campbell Award. He's in the Morrissey College here at the Heights studying computer science. Of course, I stand next to somebody who was in the running for the Campbell, Mr. McElroy. <laughs> Didn't win it, though. Sam Ocho got me. You're well-deserving. <laughs> Let's see, if you're not first, you're last. All right? So <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter. I was Just because I was up for it doesn't mean I won it. I Second win and five. It. Flowers in motion. Look at this pressure on Jerkovic. Oh, and he lofts it back to Bailey, who smartly says, I will not catch that, as Gimmel was coming in hard on Jerkovic. It was a good job there by Jerkovic. Just living to play another down. And how about the blitz there? by Gemmel, timing it perfectly, hitting it on the run, not falling victim to the play fake, going right after the quarterback and almost having a big sack, but the big body quarterback being just strong enough to get rid of the football to make sure that it stays third and medium. And keep an eye on big number 80. He's been their best weapon. He's lined up in the slot at the top. Now he's in motion, moving from left to right. One of the best tight ends in the country. And that could have been intercepted by McMichael. And thus the head shake. Kyler McMichael was just waiting on it. And they're trying to work Hunter Long and the sophomore quarterback, Jerkovic, forgot about the fact that there's some defenders out there too. You gotta see out in front of who you're throwing to. So fortunate there that Kyler McMichael went and tried to dislodge the football as opposed to catching the football because that one's pick six all day long if he's more aware. Grant Carlson on to punt away. Daz Newsom, who's a very dangerous return man, driven all the way back and then taken down with great coverage that time from Elijah Jones. So a field flipper from Grant Carlson, the punter from Texas. Five-point game here in Chapel Hill. I assume back in Chapel Hill, I'm sure a great fall day to enjoy a refreshment with friends at Linda's or... Four corners, maybe top of the hill, and watch their 12th ranked Tar Heels. Sam Howell has two touchdown passes on the day. He's back out there. And Javante Williams in the backfield. 
Quick strike. And Brown. Yards after the catch. Very well done by Deami Brown. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of this from North Carolina. They've been run the ball pretty well, pretty consistently. But when that running game gets going, it requires an additional safety in the box, so that quick passing game is likely to pick up. So they should get more looks here to Brown with off coverage. There's Williams on first down, and Williams is taken down by the tackling machine, Isaiah McDuffie. Comes from Bennett High School in Buffalo, New York. Played high school football for his dad, Stevenson McDuffie, in western New York. I'm pretty impressed for the most part. Now, this is an explosive offense. An explosive offense that's so difficult to contain. All things considered, on first and second down, man, this Boston College defense has hung in there. They've done some nice things. It's been third down that's really been their Achilles heel throughout the course of this game, but their plan on early down and distance has been quite solid. Second and eight, empty look for Howell. Four-man rush. Howell, plenty of time to wind it up. And that ball is intercepted, but a flag is down as Mike Palmer, the safety, came over. That was Williams all the way downfield. Pass interference, defense number 55. It's a 15-yard penalty automatic, first down. And how fortunate here, because I really don't like this decision. Late, throwing the ball on a nine route down the field to a running back. I mean, that's so difficult to try to pull that off. And obviously with the guy in his face, it didn't make it any easier. But it was a good call by the official. It's pretty clear there that Isaiah McDuffie, number 55, creating a lot of contact there with Williams on the go route. I understand that he sees the matchup, but that ball's got to get up and down right now instead of waiting, trying to throw it way downfield and forcing a running back to try to track it. That's not what they do naturally. They want the ball in their hands. Well, penalty brings it past midfield to the BC 48. Carter looking for something, not finding anything, as he is driven back by Brandon Barlow and the rest of that front seven. And another flag reigns in. And now players are in each other's face as coaches are coming to separate them from the North Carolina staff. Look like some very fast graduate assistants running out there. I was going to say, GAs. Was, I don't think I've ever seen coaches on the field that quickly. Clearly, they know their assignment. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 55, 15-yard penalty automatic, first down. And you look at it, I mean, it's, it's definitely the whistle was blown, and they... I think probably took it a little bit too far there after the whistle and you can see McDuffie on consecutive penalties back-to-back -back plays on one of their best defenders you got to reel him in here Jeff Halfley or talk to your guy redshirt junior veteran guy but clearly playing with a little bit too much emotion right now as you see him slamming to the ground so after the penalty First down from the 33-yard line. And Carter struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage as he's thrown back again. And a penalty comes out again. So BC is playing with extreme emotion right now up front, and it's costing them. That was Max Roberts, the new kid in town, the transfer. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number four, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And it's just unnecessary. I mean... I understand the emotions are hot, and normally, if the emotions weren't hot, the official probably doesn't throw that flag. But, given what's happened over the last couple snaps, obviously, intensity and emotions are at, an, at a high at this point, so this is the official's job to police the game. I understand it's physical, but there you go. you got to talk to your guys, calm them down, allow them to relax, give them a play or two off, put them back in there, and make sure they capitalize on that emotion moving forward. North Carolina sitting there at the BC 18 already. Howell to the end zone. Incomplete. Jason Maitre had coverage on Josh Downs and denied him. Downs is a freshman who they're very high on. He is the nephew of Super Bowl champion Dre Bly, one of the great UNC players in all-time history and their defensive backs coach. 
I like the idea there by Phil Longo and, and Sam Howell taking a shot. Look, you might be able to get one, a couple penalties. Things are working in your favor. Take a shot downfield, just slightly underthrown though, and a little late from the quarterback. Second and ten. He set up the screen, and then Howell goes back to the middle, and it is denied again. Max Richardson, and yet another flag is down. Ball looked like it was tipped before it got the intended target, where Richardson came through and broke it up. When a screen, though, takes that long to develop, usually those offensive linemen are downfield, so you might see an ineligible downfield right here with the call. There is no foul for an ineligible receiver downfield as the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down. Good job by the officials, of course, as soon as the ball is tipped. Ineligible, not a factor. A good job waving off the penalty, but right there, you see that screen. I mean, it takes forever. Those offensive linemen 10, 12 yards downfield in some cases. Here's the down and distance, though, that has really plagued BC so far. They have to have an answer, and right now, Sam Howell's got one-on-one -on -one with number two, Deami Brown, at the bottom of the screen. A-gap pressure coming after Howell, and it's incomplete. They sent Mike Palmer, the safety, right up the middle after Sam Howell. So bend, don't break after all of the penalties for Boston College. And Isaiah McDuffie is slow to get up as the training staff runs out. And then McDuffie does get himself up and is able to come off the field. Yeah, this pressure is called hey diddle diddle, three up the middle. One, two, and then here's the guy that's going to clean it up. It's protected if they only bring two, but that third guy is what forces it hot and forces Howell out of the pocket. Just a really tough look to go against. And an excellent call there defensively by the Excellent defensive coordinator for Boston College, Tim Levicu. Grayson Atkins on for the 35-yard attempt. This kid is very talented as he puts it through. And eight. The concept was developed by senior linebacker Toman Fox, who is described by his teammates as a man with amazing talents. One involving art. The patch is a fist with the words peace, justice, freedom, equality, and say their names. Taman comes from a family of artists. That was so well done by him, designing the social justice decal. His father and mother are both artists. Let me tell you something about Mac when it comes to leadership, when it comes to, and everybody knows him as this grand avuncular character. And I think I speak for everybody that in the course of the last, you know, past decade has had the chance to work with him and he has been obviously covering him for many years before that. Everybody is better for having him in their life. Everybody in the lives that he's touched. Oh, he's one of the best. I mean, a true ambassador and does such a great job of taking care of his kids. Jerkovic finally gets it to Flowers. They've been looking for that all day long. The Flowers just tracking along the line on the crossing route off the boot, and they find it there as it goes for three yards. Surratt with the tackle. I think they've run that play like seven times. Seriously. <laughs> that might be the first completion. They've also had defensive holding on that play, and they've had three drops on that play. So clearly, you go to it enough, it'll eventually work for you. Flowers is a guy they really need to get going here in the second half, though. Not many opportunities there in the first half to make an impact with the ball in his hands. He had 162 yards receiving against Duke week one. Second and seven. Jerkovic with time, and he throws it short of Flowers. So it'll be a third and seven for the Eagles and Phil Jerkovic, the big guy out of Pittsburgh who was one of the biggest recruits in the country when he says, I went to Notre Dame because of the brand, but the second time around, it was about the people. He said coming to BC was all about the type of people here and the coaches I'd be around. Yeah, and they have empowered this young man too, and he's responded. So that throw a little off the mark, but his best football has been played in the second half. So expect Frank Signetti to continue to trust his quarterback to push the ball down the field. Third down and seven for BC. Four-man look coming after Dracovic. Look at the time he has. Directing traffic and then does find the target. Garwo, the running back, the redshirt freshman from Levittown, Pennsylvania. Many in the program believe he may be their most well-rounded overall back. And that was just a great job by the offensive line. I mean, there wasn't anything there initially. He was looking almost exclusively to the left side of the field. 
And then he see obviously Garwo just kind of wanders his way out. And really, it was all made possible because of the extended time given to him by that offensive line that has had their ups and downs in these first few games. Jacobic on first down, the whistle's blue. Before the snap, false start. Offense number 73, five yard penalty, first down. Aaron Rodgers and the 3 0 Packers go up against the Falcons at Lambeau Field. Comes your way, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Coverage of Monday Night Football starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6. Of course, you say Falcons around here, and it's Matty Ice that comes to mind. 2007, what he was able to do with BC, got up to number two in the country that year, and he was in the mix for the Heisman before a late season loss. First and 15 as he looks to get it to Hunter Long. You think through the history of BC quarterbacks, and here's Dracovic coming in to this situation. First start performances. Flutie lost, Foley lost, <laughs> Hasselbeck lost, <laughs> Matty Ice lost. Dracovic won and yeah. passed for 300 yards. Here you go, put a little more pressure on him. That, that's great. Uh, no, I, I think that's excellent, huh. obviously, as you see Flutie. Deuce, deuce right there, number 22. You know, North Carolina fans of a certain generation remember Flutie in 84. He had six touchdowns down at Foxborough. They won 52 to 20. This is a far different North Carolina team right here. Let me tell you, are they talented? Second and 10. As Dracovic goes to midfield to C.J. Lewis, the six foot three big target from Hamden, Connecticut. He was a prep school quarterback on one of the very best teams in New England history and then made the transition to receiver here at the Heights. Auburn, Georgia. Top 10 matchup on college football primetime. 7.30 at ESPN. Who's going to be the Georgia quarterback? I want to know, Greg McElroy. <laughs> That's the big Who's mystery. it going to be? Well, if, it, if last week was any indicator based on how he played in the second half, you'd think Stetson Bennett. Ruling on the field is that the runner was short of the line to gain. That plays into further review. Take a short break. Here is Jerkovic working in the middle of the field. It looked like he secured the catch. Of course, the ball has been spotted. They're at the 50-yard line. Right there. It does look like the catch is secure. Ball doesn't move. It doesn't appear, at least. We'll see the spot there. They could be looking because he was pushed back by Trey Morrison. Right. And so I, Lewis secures it in forward progress, and he's going back against the grain. So they have right now a pimple of leather cresting on the 50-yard line. Might be the 49. Which would be third and one. It might move it back just a, just a yard, maybe a half yard, but it's really close. I mean, of course, the yellow line is not... 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. As you see the ball, though, I mean, it looks like where his body's at and where the ball is, it feels like it needs to move maybe just towards BC, then to the field by about a yard. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It'll be third down. So it'll be third down and one for the Eagles and their play caller, Frank Signetti. So, if you look at the first couple weeks on short yarded situations, it's pretty predictable. Jerkovic has carried it on a quarterback sneak. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So you can expect here, even though North Carolina is going to line up a couple defensive tackles right over that center, but got to think quarterback sneak is probably the go to. Third down and one. And that's exactly what they do, and that's exactly what Jerkovic does time and again every time he does quarterback sneak. Well, let's go to the studio and Kevin. Tess, it was 14 all in Tuscaloosa since then. Alabama's outscored Texas A&M 28 to three. Here's second and 22. Matt Jones, the Jalen Waddle, and there's that 4-3 speed, 87 yards to the house. 42-17, Bama late in the third. Thanks, Kev. Waddle's got over 140 yards and a touchdown. Jones is over 360 and three touchdowns. Meanwhile, one possession game here in Chestnut Hill. As met and taken down was Galloway. That was Surratt coming in. Surratt is so impressive. Last year, 115 tackles. Was second in the ACC. 
I mean, he's awesome. I mean, I love watching that kid play. He's so versatile, too, Joe. I mean, oh. he can rush the passer. He can blitz. He's excellent in coverage, has great awareness. Because of the time he spent playing quarterback throughout the course of his career, he has a very bright future. The funniest part, though, when you ask him, his brother Sage Surratt's a pretty dang good player in his own right, who's a wide receiver at Wake Forest. So, oh, he opted out, and he's prepping for the NFL draft now. Think about the talent in that family. Amazing. False start. Offense number four. It's five-yard penalty. Second down. Second and 15 Good. as they tag Zay Flowers there. It's funny because we asked Surratt, we'd say, hey, who's who's the better player, you or your brother? He said me. <laughs> <laughs> I said I would love to ask Sage what his response might be because I saw him do some special things last year. I don't know if the wide receiver wants to mess with a linebacker, though. <laughs> should have asked him the follow-up question, can you cover him? That's what I should have asked him, but I, I resisted the urge. BC, nine total penalties for 80 yards, puts him in a second and 15. And Flowers' ball came out and then harmlessly goes out of bounds at midfield. Storm Duck came in hard against Flowers. And this North Carolina defense has been flying around, man. I, I tell you what, this offense, I know, I know why we love this North Carolina team here in 2020 is because the offense and the talent on that side of the ball. But this defense, man, do not sleep on this group of defenders. They're young, they're talented, and they're likely a group that's going to get better and better and better as the season goes along. It's been a really impressive performance here tonight. Third down and 12. Jerkovic, a lot of time, but he can't find anything. And now he turns around against the grain. And Jerkovic's gonna run, and he doesn't go down until he's taken down at the 45. A whole lot for not much. And they're gonna send out the punt team. He went every which way and finished with five yards. As you look at Frank Sidetti, the offensive coordinator, just scratching his head. I mean, that was one where you just hold your breath. Quarterbacks run around and doesn't slide. They've talked to Dracovic at some point. Maybe that's the next phase of his development. I know he's big, I know he's sturdy but maybe just slide, self-preservation. Don't take those unnecessary hits there in the middle of the field. Grant Carlson had a field-flipping 52-yarder earlier. Now he's trying to pin North Carolina here. Toe Groves is the return man for the heels, and he gets the fair catch at about the 12-yard line. Number here in the third quarter, Michael Carter going to test that right edge as he's tackled by Muse. There's some doubts with this BC defense. And without their starting safety, a patchwork defensive line that's been put together with some grad transfers. And trying to hang here today, only trailing by eight against this ultra talented North Carolina team with that offense led by Sam Howell. 24 to 16. Jordan crying has made it as a cutout here. Permit restrictions not allowing fans as we start the fourth quarter with number 12 North Carolina on top 24 to 16 crossing route this time as Walston will have the first down now what's interesting about this fanless atmosphere here in Chestnut Hill Massachusetts is Greg most would say oh boy a sterile environment no energy fanless this has been a feisty game <laughs> very feisty uh, extracurricular almost every snap I mean these teams there's a lot of physicality going on. They are playing with intensity. Look at Carter. It will split defenders before he's ridden down by Max Richardson. Sam Howell, 201 yards passing, couple of touchdown tosses. Did have that interception when the ball was batted that teed up a Boston College touchdown. Williams, a lot of green space, and Williams so tough to bring down as he goes past midfield for the heels. It looks like they seem to have found something here in the run game, trying to secure the edges a little bit, get Williams and Carter out in space in one-on-one -on -one situations, see if they can make some guys miss. Looking to extend the play, and then he's taken down. He is sacked 
by Isaiah McDuffie. McDuffie, who tore his ACL a couple years ago, didn't come back until the final months of last season, but he has been a terror so far for this 2-0 Boston College team this year. Just excellent pursuit there from McDuffie, but that really was made possible by the secondary of BC. There was nobody open downfield. At some point, Howell has to recognize, look, man, I can't hold it forever. Got to escape and maybe create with my legs. Second and 18. Delayed pressure this time, and that sails incomplete. Flag is down. Back near the 40-yard line. Holding offense number 72. 10 yard penalty. Correction that penalty is declined. Will be third down. So they decline the penalty. It's a smart thing to do because they're in a massive hole. The third and 18. Tem Lukabu, the defensive coordinator for Boston College. We told you his backstory. The son of a diplomat. He was born in Congo came to the United States because his father was working at the United Nations, didn't know the first thing about American football, and then fell in love with the game in middle school. And he's been a rising star in the coaching ranks, and he's calling a heck of a game defensively here against the number 12 team in the country. Third and 18. Here's pressure, they pick it up, and there's a strike to Brown. But he's going to be well short of the line to gain as he is taken down at the 45-yard line. Big decision here from Mac Brown because your defense has been playing pretty well. But you also have one of the best quarterbacks in college football. They're going to punt it and play field position. So Luka Boo's defense does their job. They come up with the stop. McDuffie had the sack, and then they kept the ball in front of them. Here we are, 12 and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. And Ben Kiernan is on to punt away. Jalen Gill's going to put those heels on the 10-yard line. Aussie kick looking for the pin. Fair caught. This is something, Cart. They've had plenty of Chaz. Chaz Surratt is awesome. And this kid is so impressive playing linebacker. They need more dads. He doesn't have a catch yet today. BC defense has been shutting him down. But number 21, who's on the field right now, he is special. Very special player. Five-yard run from David Bailey. <laughs> Going to keep it on the ground with Bailey. Going to be third down and about three from there. Under 12 minutes to play in this BC team. Has found a way. New staff, a lot of new players. Coach Jeff Hafley came over after the sensational run he had last year at Ohio State. And he has brought a certain attitude to this program. And with Phil Jerkovic at quarterback now and still three years of eligibility, he was one of the biggest recruits in the country when he went to Notre Dame. They feel like the future could be very bright here in Chestnut Hill. Third down and three. Keep an eye on Hunter Long, who's in motion right now from left to right. Third and three, Jerkovic, and he'll get it complete to Spencer Witter. The tight end who played for Coach Spinato and the Choke Wild Boars and won five straight New England championships and 48 consecutive wins at his high school. Reminder, UFC Fight Night is coming your way. Holly Holm, Irene Aldana is the main event. Prelims will go at 7.30 on ESPN Plus. Main card, 10.30 on ESPN and ESPN Plus. Holly Holm in action tonight. Fight Island from Abu Dhabi, UFC Fight Night. We're going to be multi-screening later tonight with all the good football, Auburn, <laughs> Georgia, and then you get combat sports with me, it's over. Jerkovic winding up downfield and far too much from Zay Flowers, and it was good coverage that time as McMichael was stride for stride with him. His first year on the field for North Carolina after transferring from Clemson. I'm telling you, these corners last year, we, we did the game against Clemson when North Carolina had them on the ropes. And these corners, it's like you held your breath every time because they were so young. 
to see how much better they've gotten just one year is remarkable. That's going to be an elite group here very, very soon. And then there's the recruiting, which is taking off, too. Second and ten, Jerkovic giving traffic downfield, and he wanted Hunter Long. And Hunter Long wants a penalty flag, but he can't find it as Trey Morrison was there. He's the Swiss Army knife of that North Carolina defense. He'll play everywhere. He's matched up with Long. Yeah, a good job here by Morrison. I mean, a lot of contact, obviously. But hey, man, it's a safety against a tight end. Those matchups are often very physical. A little contact there at the end, but I like the no call. I mean, Morrison was trying to get his head around. There was definitely contact, and had he thrown the flag, I would have understood. But I still like the no call there by the official. Dracovic has thrown Long's way 14 times today. He has seven catches. Third down and 10. Strong arms in and spinning his flowers, trying to get that line to gain, but he's going to be short. That was Don Chapman who was able to tackle him. And so close, so close. It's a big decision here, obviously, from Jeff Halfley. Do you keep your offense on the field? You have a big quarterback that hasn't been stopped yet on a quarterback sneak. They ought not to. Listen, their own 36-yard line, but you make a good point. Jerkovic at 6'5", and yeah. listen, we think the kids, they listen at 226. He's easily 245, and he gets it every time. I would have gone for it. I mean, that has been unstoppable. So they play conservative. Carlson punts it. He's had a good game. Newsom. Fair catch down around the 20. So Carlson to go to class. We'll burn him up. 120 steps to get up to your classes. Did you count them one by one? Please. You did, didn't you? Or is that an estimate? I'm so old, they weren't a million dollars back then, Greg. <laughs> they were just stairs. Inflation. 24 to 16. North Carolina, and there's Carter. Look at him go. Michael Carter. And it was only a matter of time with this North Carolina offense, right? All the talents. And here we are deep in the fourth quarter, and they're looking to put this thing away. Yeah, and you just had to wonder. I mean, you had just a second to go. Boston College, fourth and one, their own 36-yard line. Jeff Halfley decides to trust his defense. And understandably so, they've played well, especially here in the second half. But at some point, this Ferrari that wears Carolina blue is going to rev its engine. And it did right there with a really nice game. For 35 yards from Michael Carter. And then there's this guy, Sam Howell, and this is a different dimension running the ball. Let's check in with Kevin Nagandi and the guys. Test Florida State 25-0 all-time against FCS schools. In trouble against Jacksonville State, down 24-21. Lawrence Soafili, that's the first Knowles lead of the game. 28-24, late in the third. Back to you. That has been a head shaker all day long. Look at that score. Florida State trying to get their first win of the year. Here we've had... An ACC thriller. North Carolina's 4-0 in ACC play all-time against PC. It's the eighth all-time meeting. I'm Carolina taking a shot right here. Second and two. Swing it to the outside, and it is Daz, and it is a first down for the heels inside the 30. Tonight at 7.30 Eastern, remember it's number four, Georgia, hosting number seven, Auburn, between the hedges. That's going to be a great one. Got the NBA Finals tomorrow on ABC. Monday Night Football, Packers, Falcons. That is the menu now playing on ESPN. Boy, you know, you come off of all the delays of COVID to the sports world, and now you look at these weekends, and everywhere you turn, there's something great to watch. How? To the end zone. That's his threat, man. Incomplete. He was looking for Daz Newsome. Matry had coverage on Newsom. Matry's having, I'm sure, a very pleasant conversation with him right now. <laughs> Local kid who went to Everett High School and played for John DiBiasso. It's just so cool for the for the viewers at home to hear the chatter. I mean, if, empty stadium. I wish there were fans in the stands. Of course, we all do. We love culture with the pageantry of it. But the chatter that you are now getting here it's, in this 2020 season is so unique and interesting. This is going to sound so strange because we've done games with a lot of fans, actually, right. down south, right? This is actually the most intense game we've done this year. <laughs> There's an intensity to this one without fans. Incomplete. He wanted the in-cut to Corrales, but the flag may get it for him nonetheless. As Josh DeBerry was in on the play defensively. Other way. Holding offense number 74. It's a 10-yard penalty. Second down. It's on the right tackle, Tucker. 
pretty obvious there. I mean, yeah, it's a big old bear hug. As Tucker's now down on the ground. He's got a lot of experience as a starter now. Big guy, man, and he's, his presence is felt in the fourth quarter more than anything. That big body. But Hill, 741 to play. North Carolina with the ball, up eight, number 12 team in the country, had the 21-day layoff. They come up here to Chestnut Hill. They find a BC defense that is over-delivering. Second and 20. Pressure off the edge against Howell. He gets rid of it on time. Well done by Sam Howell as he goes to Brown. Ineligible downfield on the pass. Offense oh. number 63. It's a five-yard penalty. Second down. I feel like this North Carolina offense, every time they take a leap forward, there's something that brings them back, whether it's untimely penalties, a sack, but finding that rhythm, finding that gear has been so challenging for Mac Brown's team. Uh, it's it's got to be frustrating. I know it's been a long layoff, and you're not all the way buttoned up, not all the way dialed in offensively, but and so many self-inflicted mistakes. Second and 25 now. They bring pressure again with Richardson picked up again and checking down underneath to Brown is Howell as he will be tackled at the 37-yard line. They brought the exact same pressure there where they overload the right side. They had it picked up, really nice adjustment there along the offensive line and in the protection. If they run it again, though, if I'm Howell, you have a chance to take a shot down the middle of the field. On third and 18. So let's see whether or not Tim Le Lukabu decides to bring pressure yet again for the third consecutive snap. Lukabu, the defensive coordinator for BC, third and 18, showing a gap right now, and he comes after him. And how gets free. And then he puts that body forward to the 31 yard line, met up with Max Richardson there. Remember, it was third and 18, though, and six yards isn't going to do it, so it's a fourth down. Obviously sitting in there with plenty of field goal range with Atkins in his leg. He's made a 55-yarder in his college career. Just based on, on Mac Brown's mannerisms and where he's standing on the field, it makes me think they're going to take a timeout. Mm-hmm. At least give themselves a little time to weigh their options here on fourth and long. And that's exactly what Mac Brown will do in his second. I love this play as he extended it, floated with the line of scrimmage, hit Williams across the middle for a really nice touchdown. But this interception, the one black eye on his first half performance, which led to Boston College's only touchdown of the game as Jerkovic, excuse me, Jerkovic did a nice job connecting for the touchdown pass. Grayson Atkins on to attempt the 47-yard field goal for North Carolina. And that ball is no good. So the guy who was an FCS All-America at Furman at one point made 18 straight field goals comes over to North Carolina and can't connect there. And it's still a one-possession game. BC's going to take over with 5.46 to play. Huge right there. Huge. Felt like North Carolina had some momentum, had a big run, and they stubbed their toe with a couple penalties. BC's able to escape there. What felt like it was about to be a momentum surge. BC's defense gets off the field. North Carolina misses the field goal, and BC taking it now with Jerkovic under center in only a one-score game. Phil Jerkovic, a few years ago, was one of the biggest recruits in the country, went to Notre Dame. Things didn't fit. Came here to Chestnut Hill. Does he have a little magic in him to start his career here? Garwell. Muscle his way out just past the 35. Vohasic with the tackle. Jerkovic has been really good on the underneath throws. Has made good decisions. Has been smart with the football. 
has looked in the direction of his tight end Hunter Long throughout the course of this game. And gotta have it situations. That's the direction you like to look, the guy you trust the most. So big number eight, he should get plenty of looks. Second and five. Dracovic tries to get free and he does for a first down. And that is what he offers this offense. Can be off schedule with the big body and the long stride can move the chains. He does so there. with a little bit of tempo here. No huddle from Boston College. Out of character a little bit. They're trying to get this offense into a rhythm. Pick up the pressure. Lofts it, looking, and that ball is intercepted. Flag is down as Chapman corralled the ball. And he's not going to like that, is he? Holding defense number two of an eligible pass receiver. It's a 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Boy, Chapman, you know, just over six foot tall, matched up with one of the best tight ends in the country in the 6'5 pro prospect, Hunter Long. Yeah, very difficult matchup for Chapman, who's been a real bright spot here for North Carolina. But clearly the hold up around the collar of big Hunter Long trying to work the outbreaking route. Tried to hide it, but not going to get away with that. Good call by the official. BC is already past midfield under five minutes to play. Jerkovic steps up, tried to split defenders, but it was Fox, Tamari Fox, who was able to drag him down from behind. Former great high school wrestler and a big muscular guy up front. And you see Jerkovic, I mean, when the, when the Red Sea parts, he just goes north and south. I mean, he realizes, hey man, four yard gain on first and 10 is a good play. So I'll take it with my own legs and see what I can do. Second down, four and a half minutes to play. BC gets it to the outside. Flowers, the speedy Zay Flowers, one of the most explosive players in the ACC. Something about this Boston College offense that seems to come to life when they absolutely have to have it. Third and short. What do you think's coming here, Joe? Quarterback sure. sneak. And that's what you've been saying all day long. And North Carolina knows it as well. Uh, there was some movement up front. Before the snap, ball start, offense number 73, five-yard penalty, third down. It's Christian Mahogany, you know, four returning starters, then he's the guy that secured that one spot on the offensive line that was available in training camp. And so it's a third and six now with 4-14 and counting down to play. As Frank Signetti calls it from the booth. I understand trying to go fast, but my goodness, man, you got to get your guys aligned. I don't understand why you would use tempo right there. Your quarterback sneak's been undefeated this year. Third and six. Four-man pressure on the slant that time. Galloway will have it. And that spot is going to have him just short. Quarterback sneak. Don't even think about it. It is fourth down and one. Game on the line. BC looking to tie up North Carolina in this drive. Let's see what they can do here. And a timeout is going to be used by Coach Halfley. Pressure foot deficit in the second half, and then BC rallied. They put the game on Phil Dracovic, and he answered. And then the game-winning field goal by Fumeri, and everybody all week said, yeah, I know, we're supposed to beat Texas State, but that fourth quarter served them incredibly well, and I'll take it one step further. You got a, young, you got a new young staff, you got a lot of transfers into this program, belief in each other of having confidence and belief in your coaches as well an adversity response you know I mean things are not always going to go your way and Texas State frankly it's a good program but I'm actually surprised to see Jerkovic shotgun I can't believe they're not going with quarterback sneak fourth and one and he's in the shotgun and BC's gonna get it by way of Garwo so a first down as Taylor had the tackle but they had to have it and they got it and they give it to the redshirt freshman. Under three and a half minutes to play. Number 12 team in the country. They had to wait 21 days to play the second game of the season. Here they are. Jerkovic complete again to Hunter Long. His eighth catch of the game. 15th time he's been targeted. And keep in mind, he left the game for a moment when he was banged up. Six more yards there. They will run that play over and over and over again. Hunter Long, a little five yard out. Then you have a circus seven on the outside that's about 10 to 12. Second and four. Four man pressure, Jerkovic trying to extend the play. 
Gets it complete. Here's Save Flowers. Flowers, what a move as he dives down to the 10. And BC is in business with a first and goal. 21 yard completion. Jerkovic to Flowers. Lofts it to the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles! Flag is down. C.J. Lewis as they walk it back. And this will go against B.C. Pass interference. Offense, number 11. It's a 15-yard penalty. First down. The big-bodied C.J. Lewis. You're going to see a push-off right at the end on the back shoulder. You see that arm extend. Tough look at it right there. I think it's a good call. The official was right there, and you saw the reaction, too, from North Carolina's defender who was in coverage. He fell down, and it was Storm Duck that was in coverage. Any time those elbows lock up, they're going to give that call. Lewis pushes off, and now it's first and goal from the 25. 51 pass attempts for Dracovic. Not the Boston College you've known. And one of the best players in the country just came in hard on Jerkovic, Chaz Surratt. Total disruption. He heads up play there by Jerkovic, to be honest with you. And dangerous as well, though. Very dangerous, but heads up nonetheless. You see Surratt coming off the left-hand side, overloading the pressure. And you see the left tackle there, Zion Johnson. Unable to get out as a player's down for North Carolina. And it's Storm Duck. It's their starting corner. The young man who got thrown into the fire a year ago when they had so many injuries in the defensive backfield. And he's a big contributor to this defense. See him reaching for that left foot. What a game this has been, huh, Greg? It's been a great game. Really exciting. Back and forth, and now with Boston College potentially knocking on the door. Tonight at 8 Eastern on the ACC Network, Trevor Lawrence and number one Clemson hosting UVA. It's the ACC Network primetime matchup. Folks, if you don't have the ACC Network, go to accn.com for instant access. They do a great job there on the ACC Network with all their coverage. Storm Duck taken off the field. His mom named him after the character in a soap opera, the bold and the beautiful. That's how he got that name, Storm. If I'm Jerkovic, I'm thinking, okay, they have a backup corner in the game. Uh, I'm thinking I might want to look in the direction of the backup corner. In this particular case, it's o Obi Aguna. Number 13, the bottom of your screen. Second and goal, remember, after the penalty. Jerkovic's all the way back to the 39-yard line when he throws that ball and goes to Gill. So this is going to be a third and goal from there. Ball on the 22. Third and goal. Coming up on two minutes to play. Jerkovic. Flag is down. You would think holding with everything you just saw as he launches it downfield to the end zone and into the hands of Hunter Long. But this is going to be a long walk back to clean things up with all the yellow laundry. David Bailey, the running back in pass pro, Probably got a hold of somebody, and it was Surratt coming in hard. Holding offense number 26. It's a 10 yard penalty, third down. BC had first and goal at the 10 yard line after that great play by Flowers, and now they're in reverse. Yeah, you see on the right side, clearly number 21, Chaz Surratt rushing, Bailey grabbing that jersey. Boston College, Jerkovic. Almost made a miracle happen. That was a beautiful throw and great identification downfield. Just unfortunate for the Eagles that their running back couldn't hold up in protection. Third and goal from the 32. 
Going to take a shot, launch it downfield. Incomplete. Flag comes down, though, at the three-yard line. As it was the backup corner, as you said, matched up with C.J. Lewis. Egbuna. Pass interference. Defense number 13. It's 15-yard penalty automatic. First down. So there is life here for the Eagles with a minute 42 to play. And you see right here, Igbuna. And there's a lot of grabbing, but I think right there, man, my goodness, looked like Lewis sold it a little bit. And on third and goal from that far, man, that's a tough, that's a tough flag to throw. I'm not sure if I entirely agree with, with the decision to throw it there. Now it's a first down at the 17. They're showing edge pressure. Jerkovic is ripped down. I mean, just taken down hard by Hopper. Tyrone Hopper came in, and the next thing you know, Jerkovic is on his back. DC has two timeouts remaining. It's a second down and 19. Steps up. And he's going to be forced out. And he gets pushed into the medical tent. Excuse me, excuse me, pardon me. Minute nine left. That was dangerous right there as Mac Brown having to avoid Jerkovic as he found the sideline. Glad he's okay. I mean, that was a dangerous play right there. Third and 15, 69 seconds remain. BC against the number 12 team in the country. Over the middle, he's got it complete for a first down to Hunter Long. His ninth catch of the game, first and goal, Boston College with just over a minute to play. It's a beautiful throw. Hunter Long working across the middle of the field. Excellent timing, bang, bang, to his big body receiver. We got drama in Chestnut Hill. How will the script finish? Could have been, but incomplete. Boy, oh boy, is Hunter Long the crutch that Phil Dracovic likes to lean on. Oh, man, but right there, Hunter Long's got to bring that ball in. The ball was well thrown. He's been targeted 18 times right there. Unable to reel that one in. It was a well-thrown ball on the body. With the game on the line, you got to have your All-American candidate tight end reel that in on the goal line. Just watch where 80 is right now. He's on the right side of the formation. Gills to the top of your screen. Big C.J. Lewis bottom of your screen. Nine, right there on big number 80. Second and goal. Slam, Lewis scores! C.J. Lewis and this B.C. team soaring with confidence. And here they are. Closing the gap. Just a two-point conversion away. Things are different here at Alumni Stadium. They're tossing the ball left and right. 56 attempts from Jerkovic. Speed on the outside. And able to hang with a team like this. They need to hustle. There's 10 on the play clock right now. Uh, they're going to call timeout. A good the right job thing to do. Halfway. Gather yourself. Will they? Jerkovic who has 37 completions for over 300 yards, and moments ago, a touchdown pass to cap a had-to-have-it 15-play drive. And now, a two-point attempt to tie the game against the number 12 team in the country. Do they have it in them? Jerkovic, chased back. Looking for something, and it is picked off. Morrison on the return. He's going to take it for two the other way. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Trey Morrison with the two-point return. And what could have been a tied game 
is a four-point North Carolina lead. And here's a great look at the action from the AT&T 5G Skycam. Just nothing open. It's really an RPO. Can hand the ball off if you like the numbers. Dracovic opts to throw it. Nothing there. And that two-point return is enormous. That completely changes the approach now because, of course, it's onside kick time if you're Boston College. But no longer is a field goal enough. You have to go the distance yet again. So a massive play there by North Carolina's defense. Great job by Trey Morrison to snatch that ball and bring it back. And this Carolina team pushed to the limit to the final minute. Mac Brown said all week, I'm telling you, that's a good D.C. team that's being well coached. And he knew they were going to be in for a fight coming off the three-week layoff. And now it will be on side time. And Steven Ruiz will be the kicker to try to attempt the onside. The seldom used sophomore from Illinois. But let's see what he can pull off here. Dribbler straight ahead. That thing was loose for a second. Both teams claiming they have possession. North Carolina has it. Even as BC's Max Richardson comes up with it. And you could see the BC players arguing their case with ACC ref Mike Roach saying, how can you give it to North Carolina if I'm possessing it? And Jeff Hafley's going to get his explanation. North Carolina's ball, first down. So North Carolina comes up with it. The dribbler from Ruiz. Really well executed. As you see, the ball squeaks free right there. It's a fight underneath the pile. You can see right there. I, I know they say it's North Carolina ball. I, there's no clear recovery there, though. I mean, there's no telling what's going on at the bottom of that pile. So if BC was, in fact, the one that was possessing it at the bottom of the pile, I don't understand how they can rule it in favor of North Carolina. Elijah Green, a reserve freshman running back, was in the mix there. Eagles all over him. Richardson came away with the ball, the BC team captain, the star linebacker, but... It is going to be North Carolina looking to seal this thing. I'll tell you, both these teams gave a ton today. Sam Howell will take a knee. Howell had two touchdown passes, threw for 225. Jerkovic passed for 313, a couple of touchdown passes. Michael Carter had 121 yards rushing. Defense stepped up at critical times on both sides. And drama until the end when Jerkovic's two-point conversion pass attempt was picked off by Trey Morrison. BC's going to suffer their first loss of the year, but they're going to take a lot away from this. Played well. North Carolina is going to be dangerous all season long. Number 12 team in the country moves to 2-0. 26 to 22 and a thriller that came down to a failed two-point conversion return the other way off the pick. Matt Brown, Jeff Hafley meet at midfield. College football scoreboard is up next on ABC. For Paul and Greg, I'm Joe Tessitore. Enjoy the rest of your night. Here's Kevin, Mark, and Booger. Take it away, gentlemen. Tess, thank you so much. We're getting you ready for Spencer.